All right, fellas, five minute video, how to build a killer morning routine that you're actually gonna stick to. Number one, keep it simple. Your goal is to get out of bed and get to work as quick as possible. The biggest mistake you can make and one that I have made I'm so guilty for is procrastinating by doing stupid things. Meditating for two hours, reading, ice baths, pointless things that distracts you from the work that you know you need to be doing. The reason you are not where you want to be is because you are avoiding work and you are doing things that do not serve you. Focus on what will set you up for the day, execute and then get to work. This does not involve morning meditation, morning reading, ice baths. Do that once you've done your work. Instead, focus on what really, really matters. And that's what I'm going to show you now. The perfect morning routine starts with waking up early. It depends on what time you went to bed. Ideally, go to bed at like 10 o'clock and then get up at 6, 7. That's the best thing. I don't think people should be sacrificing eight hours to be waking up stupidly early. However, if you have the ability to wake up early and to go to bed earlier, by all means, please do so. Because everyone knows when you wake up earlier, you are more productive. You feel better. You get more done. No one wakes up at six to go watch Netflix. They wake up at six to fucking mean business, hit the gym, get shit done, do whatever you need to do. So yeah, you're going to wake up early and then you're going to brush your teeth and wash your face. That takes two minutes. After that, hydrate with a litre of water. Grab one of these bottles, take a little bit of salt, Himalayan salt, you can get that from your counter, maybe some electrolyte tablets and just get that into your system. The reason why we use the salt and electrolytes is because if we go a bit sciencey here, your adrenal system is what's acting in the morning, not your adenosine system. Shout out Andrew Huberman. Basically, caffeine does not affect you very well in the first 90 minutes of waking up. Your adrenal system is working though, so you essentially want to replenish electrolytes in order to get your brain functioning and uh, get the nerves moving. Get those, uh, how do I say it, those synapses functioning. That's what you want to do. And essentially the reason why is when you don't drink water for eight hours, you need to hydrate yourself. But hydrating water is not simply enough. You lose a lot of electrolytes when you don't hydrate yourself for that long. Therefore, the fastest way to do that is just take a little pinch of salt, pop that in a glass of water, neck that. Take it a step further, use some electrolyte tablets. Really, really helps. After that, you want to go for a five to seven minute walk. I recommend doing it without a phone. I think the whole morning routine should consist of no phone. Just because when you wake up, you're fresh, you're clear. And basically going through Instagram or going through Snapchat, will just open your mind up to loads of problems that are not fucking real. You are subconsciously more interested in what other people are doing when you scroll through Instagram and Snapchat, and you are creating little problems and thoughts in your head that should not be there. When you wake up, you're so clear, you're ready for the day. And when you worry about what Chloe's doing in Spain, you start thinking subconsciously, oh, I want to be in Spain, all this stuff, and think about how my life shit, all of that. No, five to 10 minute walk, no phone. Get the circadian rhythm going. The reason we do this is because when your eyes see sunlight, it starts a melatonin clock. It basically starts a timer when you should feel asleep. So when you have really poor sleep issues, it's probably because you're not setting yourself up for success in the morning and going for that walk, getting that natural sunlight. Going for that five to 10 minute walk will not only keep you alert, get your legs moving, get the blood pumping and make you feel good. It will also get you ready for bed that evening because the minute you see sunlight is the minute you start to feel sleepy if that makes sense after that shower wear nice clothes get to work this depends on your routine you might work a nine to five where all of this is a prerequisite showering wearing nice clothes and get to work but i'm speaking to the guys who run a business or a university or unemployed don't do your work when you haven't showered have a fucking shower you're gonna feel good wear your nicest clothes get your nice aftershave and put it on your nicest underwear, look the part, feel good, and get straight to work. The only thing I would say is to maybe do a five minute journal. And for that reason, I literally have where are we? A little book entitled The Five Minute Journal. It's on Amazon. It costs about twenty pounds and it just consists of writing three things you're grateful for, three things you want to achieve, and a daily affirmation. You then do a little review in the evening, but that's what you need to do. You don't need to spend 20 minutes meditating and fucking showing affirmations at the mirror. I am this, all of that. No, you need to say three things you're grateful for because by being truly grateful every single morning, you become really appreciative of what you've got. And then it becomes very, very hard to be miserable because if you truly understand what it feels like to have benefits in your life, no matter how big or small, it becomes very difficult to be constantly thinking about what you don't have. For example, think about what you have right now 
and think about how detrimental it would be if it was to be taken away from your life. Let's say your limbs. If you woke up in the morning and you were paralyzed, you couldn't walk, and you thought about that in the morning when you're trying to be grateful, you would tr- feel truly grateful when you get to go for that five minute walk we've talked about. The reason why is because if you didn't have the legs for the next fucking year, or sorry, next rest of your life, it would be a very big burden in your life. So now you're like, oh shit. I am fucking grateful. Why am I upset? Why am I miserable? I have everything I need. I have legs. I can walk. I woke up this morning. I'm not in hospital. I'm not, I don't have an illness. I, I'm not in prison. I'm free. I can do all of this. And you start thinking like this, you know, you walk downstairs and your family's there. Imagine that wasn't the case. You start to think like this. It sets you up on the right wavelength. You're ready to attract and get new things because you understand what you have and you're happy that you have them. That's why great gratitude is so important. I think a lot of people get it wrong. Think about what if what you had was to be taken away from you. Truly think about that. And then it puts you in a state of abundance. You think, right, I've got this. Let's see what else we can get now. Three things you want to achieve as well. Just literally write three things you want to do that you'll know you're going to do. If you can tick them off every single day, 30 days in a row, 60 days in a row, 90 days in a row, you keep winning. And those wins stack up, keep getting better. You create momentum. Put that into a power list. So what I do is I take the three things I want to achieve and then I take a number one task and I put all my energy into that number one task for the first four hours of the day. I'll probably do it quicker, but I know once that number one task is done, I have one day. That's all that matters. If something comes up, something urgent, which I need to take care of, doesn't matter. Got the first task done because I put it on the power list. I said, this is a non-negotiable. This is going to be the needle mover. This is what's going to drive the business forward. This is what's going to help me progress. So that's why... We want our power list. We want the three things we want to achieve. If they get done, we win. Take it a step further. Stay faster in the morning. This is a little bit difficult when you want to bulk and you want to be in a surplus, but I still do it because of the benefits. It's just so good. It keeps you dialed in. It keeps you productive, especially with coffee. But the point is, if you're digesting, it does use energy. Not much energy, but it uses brain energy. So when you're not digesting and you're using caffeine to suppress your appetite, it's a two bird, one stone complex here. You're very very productive in those mornings you're getting stuff done at double speed i just suggest you try it fast in the morning and drink caffeine and see how more productive you are it goes back to basic human instinct i guess if you're hungry you will do everything in your power to eat why would you hunt it back in the day you would hunt as much as possible and you'd put all your energy and you'd work as hard as possible to get your food and it's a kind of literally a little macroism of that you're just smashing the workout until you can eat and as a result you're going to be more productive give it a go let me know what you think but for me works absolute wonders i then break the morning fast with proteins and fats i don't like to have carbs in the morning i think it always gives you a bit of a crash especially while i like to fast in the morning if you have a big fry up full of bread and loads of carbs you're not going to feel great you're going to feel sluggish low energy the best way to keep that energy nice and high. So just break the fast with proteins and fats and then slowly increase your carbs throughout the day. This means you don't get any crash, you don't feel sluggish, and it's just a great way to start. Why less is more? Like I said at the start, you're avoiding the work you need to do. You think that you're being more productive by meditating and reading, but the point is that those tasks take time and they don't really push you to where you want to be. Yes, reading is great, you learn more. Yes, meditating is great because it gives you more clarity. But the point is, that can be done later in the day once you've done the tasks that matter. At the end of the day, it's all results. Results matter from action. What you do dictates your results, not what you think about, not what you plan. So stop thinking and do more. Get more shit done. Focus on the small things. So that's what we talked about. Waking up early, brushing your teeth, hydrating, five-minute walk, shower, work. That's it. Obviously, five-minute journal in between. But don't be wasting half an hour getting in and out of the ice bath. Don't be wasting loads of time working out before you've actually done your work. It's a bit of an argument, which we're going to talk about now. Just get to fucking work. You'll feel so much better ticking stuff off at the start of the day. It creates momentum and then go for your session. Then do all this stuff you want to do in the start of the day. Your goal is to get up and start completing tasks, ticking shit off every single day. And you want to do that as quick as possible. So your goal is to race through that fucking morning routine and get cracking. 
there is an argument of training. You can train and maybe you should, but it does depend on how early you get up. So if you get up at six and you want to go for a run from six till seven, by all means, that's that's great. Um, it will set you up for the day. You'll feel really, really good because you've done something hard. You get that runner's high. You have that dopamine. And whatever you do, you will succeed in it because you have the confidence. It's why I like to run a lot of times in the morning. However, I can tell you from experience, if I get up at 8 a.m. and I go for a run, and can finish my morning routine. I won't start until work, work until 10. And that's a little bit too late for my liking. I'd much rather sometimes do the work a lot earlier and then think about training after. I wouldn't even weight lift in the morning just because of what we talked about. I'm going to be fasted. I'm not going to be up completely. I want to be training later in the day when I have the most amount of energy, when I have carbs in my system. So I wouldn't really weight train in the morning that's just my personal preference if you do want to get into some exercise maybe sneak in a run that's really good for the dopamine as we talked about sets you up for the day doing something hard to start the day is always good however i would be very careful with this just because it can eat up time and i do think you need to move with speed i'm saying this from the mistakes i've made i think once you wake up and you, you're fresh and you have inspiration, you need to act, you need to get shit done, you need to tick things off quickly. And that's why we like to focus in this small morning routine here, get to work, keep it moving, and then crack on with the day after. Once you finish your four-hour work block or your three-hour work block, by all means, train, do what you want. But those hours, eight until 12 in the morning, are for me at least, the most productive hours of the day. And for you, it might be the same. It really does depend on what you do as a job if you work nine to five, it might be a case of you just taking a few things from this. You might be just taking the, uh, the salt and electrolytes in the five to seven at walk or maybe fasting in the morning because your routine is going to consist of just getting out of bed, probably doing one or two of these and then walking straight to work and then getting to it. However, you can still do this on the weekends. I think this is probably a little bit more targeted at the guy who runs a business, someone who doesn't have a set day or set hours, someone who's at university and doesn't know exactly how to structure their day. This is how I'd go about it. Anyone can do this, no matter what. And if you don't have a set job you're going to go into, get your four-hour work block done, done and dusted. Those four hours of work is all you need, deep work. Don't be doing 15 hours of work. It's just less productive. Four hours deep work in the morning. Go train after. Eat a nice lunch. Relax. Do some more work if you want to. That's all you need to do. That's my morning routine. And... I will say it's working fucking wonders at the moment. I feel so much more productive. I get so much more done and I don't burn out as much because I get everything done in the morning. I look forward to the mornings. I'm a morning person now and I highly recommend it for someone who's struggling with morning routine. It feels they're a bit lost and that their time is getting away from them because they waste fucking three hours meditating or reading or shouting at the mirror affirmations. I am the fucking greatest piss off. Just get to work do what needs to be done and then dance around with all that shit after that's what i would recommend it's something i think is going it's a bit of a buzzword it's a bit of a bit of a fad at the moment in this whole red pill community you need to do all these things no you don't you need to go to work wake up get cracking get on with your day what's the saying fuck the day don't let it fuck you use your time effectively the clock strikes when you tell it to you fucking move with speed urgency and get shit done that's how a morning routine should be structured if you do that every single day for the next 30 days you'll build the habit of it and if you do that over a year i guarantee you will run people over and you'll get more shit done quickly that's what i'd recommend morning routine okay i was a little bit over five minutes i think we're at 14 minutes however i think i got the point across there if you're still struggling don't understand anything or want to grill me comments are there dms are open but yeah that's all i can give you in terms of morning routine hope that was useful if you got any uh, questions, hit me up. But yeah, until tomorrow. Cheers, fellas.